Tony Stark, billionaire, inventor, superhero, family man. Written by Yellow Sunflower Heart and read by Eleanor Elizabeth. Summary. Tony is stuck at work late into the evening and all he can think about is his family. He makes a few big life decisions when he finally makes it home. Tony had promised to be home in time for happy hour, then dinner, then in time for bed, then next thing he knew it was after midnight and he was still stuck at Stark Tower doing business. Once upon a time he would have just walked out of the meetings, told them to reschedule, but now more than ever Tony's erratic behaviour was a mess that Pepper not only had to clean up but also now reflected on her as CEO. He had to exercise some form of professionalism, for her sake. So, there he sat, probably not even hiding the disappointment on his face, counting the seconds until he got to go home. When he'd text Stephen, five times in total, apologising for each deadline he missed, all he received back was a, see you when you make it, love, don't rush. And that made it a little easier to stay, but it didn't help every time Tony looked at his watch. 5.30pm. Designated happy hour. Wong would join them in the foyer of the sanctum, and they'd take an hour to just talk and drink mocktails. Peter sat at the coffee table finishing his homework. The four of them would talk about their day, possible renovations and restoration to the sanctum. Tony got to watch the way Stephen watched his son, so much pride and love in his eyes as he ran long, scarred fingers through the boy's curly hair the way Peter would smile back at his dad and then continue on with his work. It was a simple tradition, but Tony was just now realising how much he'd come to love it. He really needed Stephen's lap to kick his feet up on right now. 7pm. Shower time. They weren't a traditional household. The Supreme family didn't eat at the table for dinner, so they might as well get comfortable in their pyjamas before they settled down for the night. Peter would go off to his room, and Tony and Stephen would usually join each other innocently in their own ensuite. They talked more openly with each other there. Tony loved to watch the water droplets roll down Stephen's shoulders. The content little sigh Stephen made every time he got the water temperature just right was heaven itself. His partner was a pure work of art, and Tony loved to shamelessly appreciate it from a distance. Bless their grand double shower best investment Tony ever made. Sometimes he couldn't resist reaching out just to touch the faint abs under the skin of Stephen's abdomen. Tony loved to help him lather up the soap, get the corners of Stephen's back he couldn't reach. He loved when Stephen trusted him to carefully, more thoroughly, clean around the scars on his hands that still seemed to be inflamed often. But Tony loved it even more after the shower, when Stephen occasionally helped him shave or the other way round, he let Tony help him shave. It just felt special and intimate, and it held a special place in Tony's heart. Then there were the nights when Stephen walked around for a while with just a towel hung low around his hips, too distracted talking or already stuck back into an addictive book. Even sat in that room full of strangers, miles from Stephen, Tony could picture the scene in perfect clarity. God, He really needed to stop thinking about Stephen naked right now. Tony crossed his legs and sipped his water. 7.30pm. Dinner time. Neither Tony, Stephen or Peter were any good at cooking, but the one advantage to that was that none of them could tell the difference with bad cooking. They tried not to get takeout every night. It reminds me of med school, and I'm not 19 anymore. I can't eat like that and stay this in shape, Stephen would say. So they all potted around one another, usually over an iPad with a recipe. Peter would run in to do all of the heavy lifting of pots and water and taking stacks of plates. They stuck to the basics, roast vegetables, rice, pasta, the things that should be impossible to fail. There had only been one instance so far when the kitchen caught fire. They all still counted that number as a win. Wong wasn't impressed. They used the coffee table in the lounge as a makeshift dining table. The three of them typically sat on the floor, in whichever order came to them, and most nights they ate in silence. Peter typically finished before them, 
and helped himself to whatever they hadn't been fast enough to eat on the edges of their plates yet. Only because they loved him did they let him get away with it. As if right on cue, Tony's stomach rumbled. 8.30pm. Family time. After dinner, they'd usually wind down with a movie or TV show. Typically, Peter and Tony would get invested in something, and Stephen would only half pay attention with a book in one hand, the other combing through one of the boys' hair. Sometimes, Tony and Stephen would cuddle up, and Pete would sit on the floor between them and soak up all the massages and hands in his hair. Other times, when they were super invested in what they were watching, Tony would join Pete on the floor, so that they were out of the way of the sorcerer when they started to go on and on about the programme. Then, there were times when Peter had had a hard day, or he was just particularly tired, and all he wanted was his dad. He'd bundle himself up as close to Stephen as he could get, cuddling into every inch of him. And sometimes, Tony would join them. Other times, he'd just admire the father and son from a distance. On the rarer, but arguably best nights, Peter would lounge himself over Tony instead. He denies that he still feels tears prick in his eyes when Peter gets so comfortable around him, talks to him like he really is Pete's dad. Peter has, on occasion, called him dad, and it makes Tony's heart stop still every time. There's never a big deal made about it, except that first time, when Stephen smirked to him from across the couch because he literally looked like a shocked goldfish. He called me dad! Tony, he literally follows you everywhere. He adores you. Why are you so surprised? Tony remembered the way he crawled straight into Stephen's arms and just squeezed, trying not to let all the tears fall, but failing only a little bit. Stephen held him back so tightly and whispered the sweetest things in his ear while he got used to the idea that Pete really loved having him around. So much so, he considered Tony family. God. Tony would far rather be in Stephen's arms right now. 10.30 to 11 p.m. Bedtime. They'd always say their goodnights with hugs and kisses, going their separate ways from the living room to the bedrooms. Both men knew Pete well enough to know he doesn't go to bed first ask. So once they've pulled their own covers back, brushed their teeth, and are down to just a lamp lighting the room, one of them will go knock on Peter's door and give the... All right, lights out for real now, okay? Talk. Sometimes he'd want another hug before he complied, but he always climbed under the covers and wished them goodnight, allowing them to turn the light off and close the door. After a quick walk back to the master, they'd find themselves in a tangle of limbs, somehow never quite right, but perfect at the same time. Tony and Stephen never went to sleep without a cuddle first, even when they were angry and hadn't talked to the other all day. Neither of them was very good at expressing their love with words, so these moments were like their own little language. It was a reminder that even when they were hot-headed with each other, or they disagreed, they were still an unbreakable team. They had each other's back to the end. There was no higher priority to them than each other, except Peter. Tony watched the time pass by, filled with more and more dread the more he missed with his family. By the time he was finally let out, he found himself sprinting for the car park. He didn't hold the elevator when asked, didn't make conversation with the attendant at the security gate. Pepper would probably send a bill in a couple of weeks for the tyre marks he left at the entrance as he sped off, but none of that really mattered. What mattered was he'd missed his family all day, and his heart wouldn't calm until he saw Peter sleeping soundly in his bed, perfectly safe and unharmed and he could crawl into bed and wrap his arms around Stephen, softly kissing him back to sleep. That was all he'd been able to think about all day. He took the roads faster than he should have. Stephen would scold him if he ever found out about it, but Tony was a little impatient. In his defence, he was still being safe. He effortlessly parked the car under the building and made his way inside as quiet as possible. He really didn't want to face a tired, impatient Wong. It was a week before the man got over the last time Tony woke him. He didn't want to disturb the man again. Tony crept through the sanctum until he reached their wing of the building, turning the lock of their front door and making his way into the space. 
It was almost like an apartment, completely separate to the work side of the sanctum, just big enough for the three of them, and Tony loved it. He stripped his jacket off and left it on one of the hooks by the entrance before he made his way deeper into the dark room. Tony sighed at the sight in front of him, just visible over the top edge of the couch until he came closer. Two men, completely passed out in sleep. A tiny smile graced his lips as he reached out and combed soft fingers through the long strands of grey hair on the side of Stephen's head. He wasn't sure who looked like more of a mess. Stephen looked like he'd been carelessly dumped on the couch already unconscious, clothes crumpled and limbs uncoordinated. Pete was very likely drooling down the man's collarbones, hair wild and barely safe on the edge of the couch. Tony was sure he'd seen that same shirt on the kid two weeks straight now without a wash. God, it was weird how you could still love people when they looked like such a mess. It still startled him sometimes. All it took was a look or a thought. Someone would walk into a conference room with a disastrous Starbucks order, and the smell would have Tony smiling like an idiot thinking of Pete. Or when he shook hands with someone who wore gloves... He instantly started thinking about Stephen, where he was, what he was doing, if he was happy. Tony walked his way around the L-shaped couch, pushing the over-large ottoman up against the edge where Peter was dangerously close to. If he rolled backwards now, at worst, his feet would dangle off the edge. Probably not even enough for the kid to notice, and since Tony didn't want to break this father-son moment by waking them, it would have to do for now. He left the pair in peace as he quietly made his way through the building to the bedroom he and Stephen shared. He dropped his clothes where he stood the entire way from the door to the bathroom, and he finally let himself relax under the scalding water of the shower. He tried to let the stress of the day wash away down the drain. It didn't matter how hellish the day was. His two boys were passed out in the next room, safe and happy. And that was all that Tony wanted. He slipped into a pair of Stephen's pyjamas, careful not to trip on the two long pants as he waddled back into the living room. He had no intention of waking either man, so he would just have to join them. He fetched a blanket and threw it over the father and son, then hopped on the couch beside Peter. The ottoman wasn't the most uncomfortable thing in the world, surprisingly, though Tony thought his back might disagree by morning. None of that mattered now, though, because these moments were rare, and Peter was only getting older. In a few years, he'd probably fly the nest, and it would just be him and Stephen in this big building. Stephen Cuddles would never get old, but Tony would seriously miss Peter's embrace every afternoon when he returned from school or hanging out with Ned and MJ. Tony would miss walking in and seeing the three kids laughing at the dining table. Tony was so happy MJ had opened up more around them recently. He really wanted her to know, that this was her home and family too. It was weird to think that Peter would go off to college and make other close friends, and Stephen and Tony would probably never meet them, unless at a birthday or wedding. It was almost scary to think he had to let go that much, but it also reminded him of how far Peter had come and how hard he'd worked. Tony was so incredibly proud of him. Peter was his pride and joy through and through. Tony lay down behind the kid, instantly feeling the heat he had radiated. Stephen must be scorching under him. The sacrifices parents made for sleeping kids, hey? Tony caressed a thumb back and forth across Peter's spine, fingers on the opposite hand in the sorcerer's hair again. Thought you'd crash at the tower tonight. Stephen's voice didn't startle him, even in the silence. Not when my family's here. Sorry, I missed dinner. It was only take help. Stephen shrugged a shoulder. But I wasn't here. And I'm sorry. You turn sixteen and you think the gross part of parenting is done. Then they drool down your shirt and you realise, once your baby, always your baby. He's beautiful, Tony whispered. Yeah, cute as the day he was born. But a lot bloody heavier. Stephen wiggled under the boy with a struggle. Peter groaned. Mm, Dad, stop moving. Close your mouth and roll over for a second. I gotta move. My back's not twenty years old anymore. Come here, Pete. Tony gently coaxed the boy to roll over and wrap the kid up in his arms. 
It took a hell of a lot of love to willingly be drooled on, especially by a teenager. But Tony didn't even think to shy away. He wound a hand into Peter's hair, massaging the kid back towards sleep, a smirk on his face as he watched his love sit up and wipe at the drool down his chest with his shirt. Marry me. The words slipped from Tony's lips effortlessly, and Stephen froze, eyes flickered to Tony's. I'm serious. Marry me. Okay. A few more seconds passed, and Stephen finally looked away to finish cleaning himself up, though he still didn't strip his shirt off before he lay down again in close behind Peter. He paused a moment, propped up on an elbow, eyes back to Tony. He leant in slowly, pressing a gentle kiss to Tony's lips. They lingered, just lips pressed to lips, no urgency, no great big conversation between them. Just a want to be close. An understanding of love. Stephen only backed away when Pete pushed him to, too drowsy to understand the situation, but awake enough to try not to be crushed by his much larger dad and his beautifully wide chest. Sorry, Pete. Stephen kissed his cheek. Go back to sleep. I love you. Mm, you too. Peter mumbled back incoherently. It was Tony's turn to kiss him on the cheek this time, and they butted him up, Tony and Stephen grinning at one another. Tony watched his future husband curl up, cuddle close to his son's back, and he couldn't resist a smile when Stephen's hand came out of nowhere and wrapped around their waists. It was only a minute or two, until Tony was the only one awake in the room again. He was happy to just lay there a moment, relishing in the family he'd found, these little moments they had stolen away. This was them, this was their life and their home. It just felt so right to Tony. He didn't need anything big and fancy, asking Stephen just now to marry him. So simple and unromantic, but so domestic. Tony couldn't think of a more perfect moment, because this was who Tony loved, and where he loved. It was more than enough for him. He wanted to be here forever. He wanted to prove to Stephen just how devoted he was to the sorcerer and his son. Tony untangled his hands from Pete's hair and caressed his fiancé's cheek instead. He didn't know what he did to deserve this life, but he was so incredibly grateful for it, grossness and all. Love was so much better than he'd thought it'd be. He let himself start to drift off, with just one final coherent thought. I love you. When they woke up, the sun was bright behind the curtains, and Peter was doing a terrible job of peeling himself out of their hold carefully. Tony was amazed the kid had made it that far. Both grown men were completely wrapped around him, and there was no way he could be subtle in sitting up. Sorry, kid. Tony rolled away a little. When did you get home? Peter wondered quietly, moving to sit up. Sometime after midnight. Sorry I missed our show last night. It's okay. Peter rubbed at his eyes. I'm going to be late for school. We'll catch up tonight, yeah? Absolutely, Tony agreed. Make sure he doesn't get up yet, Peter pointed to Stephen as he stood. He needs to rest. Which one of us is the parent here? Stephen opened his eyes with a half-hearted glare. You fell asleep on the couch with me, Dad. When have you ever done that? Take care of him, he instructed Tony. Always, Pete. Tony smiled after the boy as he quickly made for his room, and by the time he focused back at the couch, Stephen had moved closer. Tony rolled back to his side so he could tangle up with the man, drawing them as close as he could, arms strong around Stephen's waist. Morning, baby. Tony moved his hands through Stephen's hair. What you asked last night. I meant it. But I was a mess. Yeah, you were. Still are. Tony's eyes flickered down to the shirt. Then why? Because love's a crazy thing. When I look at you being the most amazing dad to Peter, I just fall in love all over again. Every time. I don't need anything fancy to give me an excuse to tell you that. You really want to get married? To you? Hell yeah! Stephen smiled shyly, and suddenly... He looked twenty years younger than he really was. Tony wished he'd known Stephen back then. 
but at least he got to spend the rest of his life with the man now. It was Tony who leant forward and caught Stephen in a kiss. Han crept back into the man's hair with a gentle tug or two. It was a little longer than usual right now, and Tony was seriously digging the dark grey that accompanied the black these days. He clutched the man a little closer and pushed on his elbow to take more control of the kiss. Gradually, he came to hover over Stephen, a wandering hand caressing every surface of skin he could touch. Stephen's warm hand found his thigh, and with little effort he coaxed Tony to straddle him a little more intentionally. Tony loved when Stephen's hands explored under his shirt, down his sides, over his hips. They were always a little cold, and it zapped against Tony's warm skin. It set his nerves on fire. There was, of course, that instinct to pull away from the sharp contrast, but Tony always found himself pushing back against the touch instead. It was an addictive pain, laced in pleasure, and the cold hands were so Stephen. No one else felt like him, and Tony only ever wanted him. Ah, you gross! Peter shrieked. And though it wasn't with urgency, since they weren't that not safe for Peter just yet, Tony broke the kiss, sat up off Stephen, and moved to his side as the other man mimicked him. You couldn't wait for me to leave first? Peter had his eyes covered as he moved to the door. Sorry, Pete. Stephen tried not to laugh. Hey, Pete, how do you feel about being best man at a wedding? Tony posed. The kid froze in his tracks, whirled back around to face them, and all the men had to do was smile for the kid to catch on. He bound over, backpack thrown halfway across the room before he flung over the top of the sofa, right into the middle of them. He wrapped tight arms around Tony first, reaching out to pull his dad in after just a second. And for a moment, time stopped. The three of them just sat there in silence and held each other tightly, an unbreakable grasp that Tony struggled to breathe against. Peter was their most precious possession, safe in the middle of them, and Tony made a decision to make sure they did this more often, hugged Peter as a family before he went off to college. Because this is what mattered now to Tony, and he had a few changes in mind to ensure that this is exactly where he'd be over everywhere else. When did this happen? Peter asked as he pulled back. We'll tell you about it tonight. Stephen ran a hand down the back of his hair. How's a celebratory dinner sound? Tony suggested. I can't wait. Then Peter was gone again, fetching his bag and opening the front door. He looked back at them one last time, eyes glowing and smile wide. Bye, dads. Bye, Pete. Stephen sent him off softly. The door closed with a gentle tap, and once again, it was just the two of them. When do you have to start work? Stephen wondered, standing. Actually, I'm going to take the day off. Might take my fiancé out for lunch. Maybe buy a nice ring? And I have another proposal to plan. Maybe you could help? Another? Stephen's eyes followed Tony as he joined the sorcerer. Yeah, if it's okay with you. I was thinking of asking Peter if maybe he'd like me to adopt him. Officially. Tony never got his answer, but instead cold hands on his cheeks and a kiss to send him breathless. He'd take that as a yes. Hey there guys, gals, and non-binary pals. It's Eleanor, and I hope you're having a lovely day today. Now, wasn't this thick? Just the cutest thing you ever did here. I was squealing. I was actually, it was difficult to record without just, like, squealing at the cuteness after every line, because it's just so adorable. I love them. I love this dynamic. I don't think that I've ever read a like supreme family like fic where peter is steven's biological son and like tony's married in and it was just such a cute dynamic to think about and i'm kind of obsessed with this now because it was just so adorable and i was just like "Ah." honestly i love these three as a family dynamic and i am gonna be doing more of them because i just I love it. Let me know what you think of it, though. Do you love this dynamic? Did this make your heart go? (laughs) I just love to hear about what you think of the fix. So let me know in the comments down below. You can also like the video, you know, 
if you liked it, and to boost my serotonin levels. You can also subscribe to be notified whenever I make new videos. I mean, which is pretty often, I have a lot of videos. You can check the backlog if you want, if you liked this. I have a whole playlist of, like, my Marvel content. Just listen, just listen along, it's a good time. If you like what I do here, you can also support me on Ko-Fi. It's nice. <laughs> if you like to chat with me, you can always join the Discord. Also, please be sure to leave questions down below for the upcoming Q&A slash surprise thing video. And thanks for listening. Until I see you again, be sure to practice some self-care. Be sure that you're going to bed on time so that you can get enough hours of sleep. Be sure to eat your five a day, brush your teeth, and get yourself hydrated. Yes, that is a threat. And I will catch you guys later.